In Florida, multiple people are killed in a mass shooting at a Dollar General store in Alabama. They look to be the first state to offer a new style of execution of death row inmates. And in Las Vegas, police need your help to solve the murder of a famous peacock. These stories and more coming at you today, Wednesday, August 30th on Real Life Real Crime Daily. And I'm Jim Chapman. And I'm Woody Overton. And I'm Mike Agavino. What up, fellas? And I'm Mike Agavino. And now you can hear me. The first time I said it, I was a little low. I had him turned down, y'all. Jim had me turned down. But he down. caught me. But he did. <laughs> <laughs> he did actually tease one of my stories. About, uh, about the cock. Hey, a couple, in Las thing, Vegas. couple things before we get started. First of all, I want to say um, the past two episodes of the Daily Show it was it was very hard to hear me. Uh, you know, you, a lot of y'all responded directly to me, et cetera, and I get that. I want you to know that we take the sound quality to to we take the utmost pride in our sound quality. And I was going to be on the road, and we knew that, and we had another system in place, and it failed. So the, uh, we, I can assure you that I'm going to have to be on the road again, and we'll, at some point, everybody in this room is going to be on the road. But we're going to have this system in place so you'll get the best sound quality again. So thank you for still listening, and thank you for sending me all the comments. Secondly, to our friends in Florida, um, you're getting hit right now. Uh, but a pretty bad storm, right? And the Gulf waters are warmer than they've ever been. And this, it, I, I fear that it may be strengthening more than what, what they're going to forecast. We've been there, people, um, unfortunately. And, and I worked every name storm for over 20 years. Um, where pr- thoughts and prayers go out to you, hunker down, stay out of the way, do what the officials tell you to do, stay off the roads when it comes to end. There's, don't go be a looky loo. That's how you get killed. Um, and our prayers and thoughts are with you. And to the Louisiana people who basically are burning up the, and the whole time I was gone and everything, I'm watching these wildfires, y'all. It's crazy in all these different parishes. And, it's, and that's not something we normally deal yeah, with. Yeah. And um, so, again, this, you know, what we do is, is entertainment, and, and but we care about y'all and, and, and your safety and well-being and we care about the the content and the um, product and everything that we deliver to you. So thank you so much and, and prayers for everybody. Well, and the board has terminated the chief engineer responsible for last week's uh, problems, Woody. So that that one was so called that sob won't uh, yeah, yeah. won't won't be right. effing with us in the future. That was not it was not it was not envision podcast studios. That's that right, happened, y'all. <laughs> no, no, that Jim, was what we call, Jim is cleared on that one though. Well, it's uh, what we call a loss in space, and it's only happened to me like four or five times in in you know over five years. But it, that's just make us you know. It's going to make us do better, okay? So just hang in there. So you will not be broadcasting from a dishwasher uh, anytime yeah, in the near yeah. future. Uh, I want to do a, a quick shout-out, guys. A good buddy of mine uh, from Los Angeles named Jared Getz uh, produced a film called God, Family, and Football that is premiering on September 1, which is uh, uh, Friday? Yeah. I think it's Friday. No, um, it's it. Yeah, or, yeah, it's Friday. Friday. It's Friday. Uh, yeah. The series follows legendary Louisiana high school coach. I'm going to try this, Danny Durant. That's right. Uh, as he returns to coach Evangel Christian Academy for the first time since retiring 30 years ago, so they follow the whole 2022 season. This is all on Amazon Freebie, and so if you have any kind of connected TV. It's one of those free services ad supported services uh, that you can easily access or go to apps and download uh, freebie. It's a group of people from Hollywood that are involved in this thing that are all really good people that I like Ben Silverman, Howard Owens, Drew Buckley, and people I personally know. So along with Jared, some uh, really good people from Hollywood and people that came out to Shreveport and shot this thing in the state of Louisiana. And I know there's a lot of Louisiana high school football fans out there. So please tune in to God Family Football on Amazon Freebie on September 1st. I wanted to say one other thing. Thoughts and prayers go out to a very good friend um, 
in Southern California who was in a horrible car accident and uh, he's alive. No one in the accident died, but his life is going to be forever changed. Dimitri, I love you. You got a lot of people that love you. And I know that you will overcome these obstacles and uh, a lot of people are depending on you. So um, we're with you. All right. All right. Well, let's get into some crime time. Crime time. Let's do it. It is Wednesday, and we're going to start with uh, three people being killed in what police are calling a racially motivated shooting at a Dollar General in Jacksonville, Florida. This occurred on yeah. Saturday. It's crazy. Uh, all three victims were black, and the suspect detailed a disgusting ideology of hate in writings, according to the uh, Jacksonville Sheriff T.K. Waters. And the reason we bring this up, look, uh, guys and gals, we try to stay away as much as we can from racial shit because we hate it. Yeah. Right. Uh, and, and this you know, it's man, just disgusting. Is, but you can't leave life. it out of this report. It's real life for crime. And, and That's right. Keep, and this, it needs to be acknowledged. So the sheriff continued to say, plainly put, this shooting was racially motivated and he hated black people. The man identified on Sunday as 21-year-old Ryan Palmeter of Clay County, Florida, was denied entry to Edward Waters University by a security officer. That's a black college there. And local law enforcement was alerted. The individual refused to identify themselves and was asked to leave. He returned to his car without incident. Uh, Palmeter donned a bulletproof vest and mask before heading to the Dollar General store less than a mile away and opening fire armed with an AR-15 type rifle uh, inscribed with a German Nazi insignia and a handgun. He killed two male victims, 19 and 29 in age, inside of the store and a female victim who was 52 in a car parked outside the store before fatally shooting himself. At 1.18 p.m., he ex- he texted his father and told his father to check his computer. At 1.53, the shooter's family members called the Clay County Sheriff's Office. By that time, he had already begun shooting. The shooting comes exactly five years after a mass shooting that occurred at a video game tournament in Jacksonville in which a gunman shot and killed two people and injured nearly a dozen others before killing himself. The suspect in the Dollar General shooting reportedly referenced that incident in his writings. Florida Governor Ron DeSantis called the shooting a very cowardly act. This shooting was based on the manifesto that they discovered from the scumbag that did this, and it was racially motivated, he said in a a video statement. He was targeting people based on their race, and that is totally unacceptable, that from the governor. Stupid and, and, yeah. I'm sure he's burning in the hill uh, uh, for doing that. You know, uh, yeah. you know, I I don't get it. I have so many friends and dear friends of of all races, right? And I mean, I, I think you, when you're little kids in the sandbox, you can put you know whatever ethnicity in there. Little kids together, what what do they do? Yeah, they play together. Yeah, because they don't have any of these biases and this hatred and and. It's just sad. It's a learned behavior. And I'm, I'll go to the Dollar General store at least once a week. I'm drinking a coffee from there now. But you know, the, uh, so prayers for those people. He um he tried to get into an HBCU. Yeah, yeah he was good. That's that. He was yeah. Good. Yeah. yeah, they turned him away. Uh, wow. And, and I'm not really sure it didn't say why. They turned him away. Maybe they, they probably had a bad suspected feeling. something, or they knew something wasn't right, right. with this kid. I, you know, uh, well, thank God they did. Yes, yeah, you're right. You're right. So he took himself out, y'all. Um, but it, it, had he not taken himself out, and he lived in Alabama, this next story would apply. And I found I find this pretty fascinating. So, but Alabama may become the first state to execute a prisoner by making him breathe pure nitrogen, a death penalty method that has never been used. Alabama Attorney General Steve Marshall asked the Supreme Court Friday to set an execution date for 58-year-old death row inmate Kenneth Eugene Smith. Their filing revealed Alabama intends to put him to death by nitrogen hypoxia. Smith was convicted in 1988 murder for hire 
for, uh, for killing a, a preacher's wife. It is a travesty that Kenneth Smith has been able to avoid his death sentence for nearly 35 years after being convicted of this heinous murder for hire slaying of an innocent woman, uh, Elizabeth Senate Marshall said in a statement. Nitrogen hypoxia is caused by forcing the inmate to breathe only nitrogen, which deprives them of oxygen and kills them. The air inhaled by people includes 78% nitrogen. They're talking about regular air, y'all, what we all breathe. But it's harmless when inhaled with oxygen. Alabama authorized nitrogen hypoxia in 2018 during a shortage of drugs used to carry out lethal injections, but the state has not yet used the method to carry out a death sentence. Oklahoma and Mississippi also authorized nitrogen hypoxia as an execution method, but have not used it. Proponents of the new execution method have claimed it would be painless, but opponents have argued that it is a form of human experimentation. The new revelation that Alabama is preparing to use nitrogen hypoxia is expected to spark new legal battles over its constitutionality. The Equal Justice Initiative, an advocacy group that opposes death penalty, said Alabama has a history of failed and flawed executions and execution attempts and experimenting with a never-before-used method is a terrible idea. No state in the country has executed a person using nitrogen hypoxia, and Alabama is in no position to experiment with a completely unproven and unused method for executing someone. That's what the Equal Justice Initiative senior attorney said. Alabama attempted to execute Smith by lethal injection last year, but failed to carry it out because of issues with inserting an IV into his veins. This was the second time in two months and the third time since 2018 the state was unsuccessful in putting an inmate to death. Really? Yep. And so Republican Governor Kay Ivey announced the day after Smith's failed execution that executions would be paused to allow an internal review of the lethal injection procedures. And lethal injections in Alabama resumed last month. The state has been working to develop the nitrogen hypoxia execution method for several years, but ha- has not revealed many details about its plans. And the attorney general's court filing did not disclose the details of how the execution would be carried out. And that's so they can stop these other people from challenging on its merits. Right. But, um, you know, firing squad, hanging, uh, electricity, you know, the, the lethal injection is, you know, by far to me, the least of any of them, right? They just put them to sleep, basically. I mean, they put them to sleep before they make them stop breathing. Right. I am really interested in this. The, um, the how long it's going to take. The you know, is it an instant? You can't catch your breath. It, it's just, it just. I've all, of course, on Bloody Angola, we talk about you know the death penalty a lot in these in these cases and you know yeah, all these things that are going on with it. Uh, but this Especially is, I, I had never heard of this, and and it, but I'm damn sure in, interested in seeing how it plays out. And the guy that is the guinea pig here yeah. uh, was supposed to be executed by lethal injection, they and they could, they, they couldn't, couldn't they find, couldn't find his find veins. veins. Yeah. Oh my yeah. god! So none of my I would think are you know, and that had to be recently, right? That's, that was in uh, I think 2018. The um, and it takes. Five years to get back to the point. Well, and then, then they come up with the same thing that the state of Louisiana, oh the government, yeah, has been basically lying about saying they can't get the drugs for it. Well, some of the supposedly the drug companies won't sell this lethal cocktail that they, they're pushing in people's arms now. Mm. But I mean, you know, gas chamber shit. The they, I mean, I don't know which one's the right one, but. The, you go and listen to the Bloody Angle or the second episode we just did, or the Patreon episode we did, where we went and dived into detail into each one of these crimes. A ser- I mean, these are the worst of the worst. They've been convicted, and you know, people don't like to think about it unless it's their family members yeah. who were raped and mutilated and everything else. Yeah, interesting, mm. right? Spark something uncommon this holiday with just the right gift from Uncommon Goods. 
The busy holiday season is here, and Uncommon Goods makes it less stressful with incredible hand-picked gifts for everyone on your list, all in one spot. Gifts to spark joy, wonder, delight, and that's exactly what I want it feeling. Hey, y'all, I ordered... A super cool piece. It's a candle with a sculpture of an LSU Tiger Stadium on top of it. And each officially licensed laser-cut wooden replica features up to four layers of detail, creating a bird's-eye view of a specific football field, seating section, and more. And every label includes your stadium's name, the team's logo, and school location. And it has a coconut soy vegan wax infused with sandalwood smell that creates tailgates and touchdown scent profile, reminiscent of game day. It's invigorating like fresh-cut grass and nostalgic like smoke from a pre-game grill. And common like the crisp autumn air of a new semester on campus. Y'all, I love it. I have it at the base of my TV and I'm ready to watch the Tigers play on Saturday night, right? Uncommon Goods. Look, when you shop at Uncommon Goods, you're supporting artists and small independent businesses. And many of their handcrafted products are made in small batches. So shop now before they sell out this holiday season. Uncommon Goods looks for products that are high quality, unique, and often handmade or made in the U.S., They have the most meaningful, out-of-the-ordinary gifts anywhere. They even have gifts you can personalize. From holiday host and hostess gift to the coolest finds for kids, to hits for everyone from the book lovers to diehard sports fans, Uncommon Goods has something for everyone, not the same old selection you can just find anywhere. And with every purchase you make at Uncommon Goods, they give $1 to a nonprofit partner of your choice. They've donated more than $3 million to date. So to get 15% off your next gift, go to uncommongoods.com slash R-L-R-C. That's uncommongoods.com slash R-L-R-C for 15% off. Don't miss out on this limit time offer. Uncommon Goods, we're all out of the ordinary. Hey, ladies, are you feeling overwhelmed by hormonal changes? Well, you're definitely not alone. There are more than 1,000 hormone disruptors living in our environment right now. It's sending your food, your water, the air you breathe, the clothes you wear, your skincare products. They all mess with your hormones. Then there's the natural hormone changes your body goes through. Premium menopause, menopause. And while it's a natural process, it doesn't mean you have to suffer through it. The good news is you don't have to suffer through it anymore because now you have hormone harmony, a formula made only with herbal ingredients that are shown to reduce hormonal symptoms in women of all ages. Hormone harmony is not just a hormone support and supplement. It's become a phenomenon. Women can't stop talking about it on social media. A bottle of hormone harmony is sold every 24 seconds. And the biggest benefit? Well, my wife says it makes her feel like her own self again. And that's what women mention over and over in the reviews. And there are over 30,000 reviews for hormone harmony. And for a limited time, you can get 15% off your entire first order at happymammoth.com. Just use code RLRC at checkout. That's happymammoth.com and use code RLRC for 15% off today. That's H-A-P-P-Y-M-A-M-M-O-T-H dot com and use code R-L-R-C. Well, let's go to the great state of Texas. Texas, Tejas. I've been practicing. <laughs> Very good. <laughs> we've, uh, we've talked about so many situations involving convenience stores and whether the corporate entity supports the clerks to uh, uh, to fight back against uh, people trying to rob stores, will is willing to arm them, wants them to just stand aside and let uh, and let things happen. But this is a unique strategy taken on by a guy by the name of Patel, who owns a 7-Eleven in Austin, Texas. His store, unfortunately for him, stands next to, it didn't originally, but now stands next to a homeless encampment that has seen its population rise dramatically over the last few years. Those people, logically, the homeless, are loitering, begging, harassing his customers, stealing merchandise, and relieving themselves on the sidewalk and all around his store. And so Patel took matters into his own hands and came up with a strategy to counter this problem. 
a pretty unique strategy. What's his strategy? He plays opera music really, really loud, 24 hours a day, Mm -hmm. seven days a week. The speakers are locked within metal casings where you can't get at the speaker to destroy it. And so the homeless are powerless to do anything to stop the noise. And he says that his strategy is having an impact. Let's listen to a little bit from Mr. Patel about this strategy. I play the music 24-7 because fuck them. That's why. Fuck them. These motherfuckers. Take a big whiff. Take a smell. Take a smell right now. You smell it? Shit. (laughs) You know where the shit is from? From these motherfuckers. They're sitting everywhere around here. Everywhere around here, they shit. The turret? No, I hope it fucking drives them crazy. (laughs) Fuck these motherfuckers. These motherfuckers. Fuck these motherfuckers. (laughs) You understand? You understand what I'm saying? I say fuck them. Mr. Uh, Mr. Patel is a bit animated, as you heard, but this is a man committed to doing something about the problem. He went on to say that three or four people waiting and coming to your window asking for money or stuff they need uh, to every car that uh, that parks in his lot is too much and was turning a lot of people away and having a massive impact on his business, that he had to pay a private company to come in and clean his entire store yard because it was full of needles, uh, that his landscaper was unwilling to continue servicing the yard for him and quit. And he knows that most of the stuff that is in the yard is either from the homeless coming directly over or from them just throwing stuff over the fence into uh, the 7-Eleven parking lot and the, uh, the yard area. He said he believes the music is a deterrent. Studies have shown that classical Music, opera music is annoying. (laughs) There's some people that might argue against that. Uh, uh, And it keeps people from congregating. Salem is a woman who is staying at the homeless encampment. And she says it's absolutely obnoxious. It's a nightmare. It's incredibly loud and unnecessary. We are not doing anything wrong. Patel would beg to differ. And he says he's noticed a change since he started playing the music. Customers tell us, hey, there's nobody in the parking lot, nobody coming to my window to ask for money. The customers are saying it's working. Guys, does Patel sound a bit insensitive toward the plight of the homeless? Uh, Well, this is just one appearance on the show for for Patel. I personally think he deserves some conversation as a potential all-Woody team member for his brilliant strategy. Uh, I I know that dude's tired of you know the people basically harassing his, his customers and all that and uh and and it will deter business yeah, i mean yeah. people will pass by to go somewhere where right. where that's not occurring and uh and so as a as a business owner i can i can feel his frustration yeah yeah the uh but, i mean kudos to him for taking the initiative right because I, I don't know why and as much time as i spent in austin they, you wouldn't believe in, in, in I mean, hey, I'm not knocking the homeless or anything else. I'm just saying, the, but everywhere you drive, and Austin is a beautiful city, and it's just a great place, but everywhere you go, there's, it's, it's just like it's overrun with, with homeless or transient people, you yeah. know, and, and God bless them. I mean, but I'm, I just, I've been to every city, pretty much about every major city in the United States, and I've never seen it like I've seen it there. Well, Patel may have created the strategy to thwart some of that across some of these places. We shall see. Tell them welcome to the team, Patel. we'll we'll take (laughs) a little bit of feedback from you on uh, social. We'll post some stuff from Patel and see what your thoughts are. All right. A Florida man missing for five months was found dead in the Mississippi River on Monday. The East Baton Rouge coroner's office in Louisiana identified that body as Jody Burt, 44, from Florida. The Coast Guard contacted the East Baton Rouge Parish Sheriff's Office about a body found in the river around 1130 p.m. on Monday. A dredging company working in the river found the body first and reported it. According to the EBR uh, coroner's office, the maritime unit removed the body from the river and turned it over to the coroner's office to determine the cause of death. 
it was reported that no foul play had occurred. Burt was missing, and the police were notified on March 23rd of this year. He was last seen on March 22nd in downtown Baton Rouge after dropping his wife and kids off at a hotel around 12.45 a.m. Burt and his family stopped in Baton Rouge for a night due to a medical condition on his part. The group was returning to Florida after visiting family in Oklahoma. Burt said he was going to park the car and was never seen again. This case was very strange initially because, as you will remember, it occurred shortly after the Nathan Millard missing mm-hmm. case. Right. This one just seems strange to me. The fact that he was found in the Mississippi River, and there's no easy way to accomplish that because, as you know, Woody, uh, you got to go up a levee to right, fall into right, the Mississippi right. River. You, I'm pretty sure after all those months in the river, they must have found his wallet in his pocket yeah. because there's no way you're going to ID him instantly. I mean, it's just not going to happen. Yeah. The, yeah. the boat body is the hottest summer we've ever had. There couldn't have been much left to it. And it, they, um, they said a dredging company found him. And I mean, you leave. Hmm. You leave and you say, I'm going to park the car, right. and somehow you end up in the Mississippi uh, River. I, I think somebody probably would. Um, something, something just don't seem yeah, like yeah, so I think it's probably somebody knocked him in the head and, and took whatever and threw yeah. him in the river. I mean, it's like you leave leaving your family. Yeah. Uh, I'm going to park the car, and you don't come back. Yeah. And the and y'all, this is the levee system there. I mean, you got to go up a giant, gigantic hill, and I, I guess it's possible he could have just been curious and wanted to see the river and, right. and but uh, very strange yeah, still, you're having a medical condition right. so you pull over why would right. i don't know man i don't know they, Seems they, weird they said me. no foul play right yep that's what they say curious curious hmm. so y'all know that i do the original real life real crime that comes out on tuesdays and i've been covering the um extensively the death penalty phase of of the trial um on for the murder of Eric Mickelson and, and the guy confessed to Christy O'Prize murder also. And there's a reason I do that and the reason that story's been going on so long because I'm about to do what happened in this next case I'm gonna tell you about, which is crowdsourcing. Uh so just months after the release of a true crime book about the disappearance and murder of an eight year old Pennsylvania girl, police cracked the nearly fifty year old cold case. Now Christy O'Prize case I'm telling you about is way old since 96, all right? It's not 50 years old, but it's still old. But Pennsylvania authorities arrested and charged retired pastor David Zan, uh, Zanstra, 83, of Marietta, Georgia, in July, 48 years after he kidnapped, assaulted, and killed Gretchen Harrington while she was on her way to Bible vacation school. Joanna Sullivan grew up in Marple Township and co-wrote Marple's Gretchen Harrington Tragedy with her childhood friend Mike Mathis. Sullivan told Fox News that the book definitely played a role in Zandra's arrest. The book was published, and we started hearing a couple months later that they were actively looking at a suspect. And lo and behold, it was someone she knew. Zanstra, a husband and father of three, confessed to District Attorney uh, Jack Stolemeister in July. Sullivan interviewed the 83-year-old suspect for her book. At the time, she assumed he had forgotten most of the details from the decades-old crime. He didn't seem to have too much to offer for the book, unlike his wife, who recalled Gretchen's disappearance clearly, Sullivan explained. In fact, Zanstra's one quote in the book is fairly short says, I was running a bus full of kids, bringing them to the church building, and when I got there, one of the teachers from asked me if I'd seen Gretchen, Zandressa said in an interview describing Sullivan's book. She said, I thought Gretchen might be with you. And I said, no. She said, well, she's not here. Either I called or I went to Pastor Harrington's house, and they confirmed that she had left to walk up the street. And I said, she's not here. I must have, at that point, called the police. The girl's remains were discovered two months later within Ridley Creek State Park. One witness reported seeing Zanstra speaking with Gretchen from a green station wagon on August 15th when authorities interviewed Zanstra and 
October, after the victim's remains were recovered, he denied seeing her that day. Earlier this year, the best friend of Zanstra's daughter, who is named in the criminal complaint filed against the defendant, told authorities that while sleeping over the defendant's house one evening when she was 10, she woke to find him groping her. When the girl there you go right when the girl told the defendant's daughter about what had happened, the defendant's daughter replied that the defendant did that sometimes. That's what the DA's press release said. The informant also recalled that a girl in her class was almost kidnapped twice and showed investigators a journal entry from 1975 expressing her belief that Zanstra was behind the attempted abductions. Sullivan said the informant came forward after Mar- Marple's. Gretchen Harrison's tragedy was published. And again, y'all, that's why I'm doing Chrissy Price story on it, right? And there's a slim chance, just like in this case, 50 years later, mm-hmm. that somebody's going to come forward with that one little piece of the puzzle. But anyway, it says a woman came forward and offered her diaries and her experience with Zanstra and her feelings that he might have been the one. Investigators contacted the defendant in Georgia. On July 17th, and despite initially denying his involvement in the case, Zanstra ultimately confessed to the crime after being confronted with evidence, including statements from his daughter's best friend. So what happens is in these cases, you know, people get older. Uh, they, I don't believe this idiot ever, probably ever grew out of it. I think he was probably still offended on some level because sex is 90% mental. But... Um, this book comes out, it's in your area, and you go and read it, and you're like, oh, shit. You know, you, you remember something that was off from way back when, and that's what we're hoping on Christy O'Prize case to get some closure for this family. Well, so, and 50 years worth of guilt there, because right. he confessed, ultimately, Absolutely. right? I mean, I don't right. think they had I w- they had circumstantial stuff after, I don't, after I don't, that. But. I don't even know, um, Mike, if it would be... The guilt part, I think that's a shout out to the officers that did it because he, if you were felt so fucking guilty about it, you could have confessed 50 years before. The problem was 50 years ago when they questioned him, they didn't have uh, the stuff to go hard on him, right? Mm-hmm. So they would mm-hmm. go hard on him, and then he crumbles like a little bitch. Mm-hmm. So interesting story. I would just like to say that in Mike's case, sex is 100% mental. <laughs> Does that then mean that the lack of sex is 100% mental as well? That's very, you're very quick, Mike. Yes. Okay. Uh, well, let's go fired. right into a story about a cock then. <laughs> let's go to Las Vegas, where frankly, I wasn't sure because we've talked about all kinds of animals and assigned all kind of, kinds of animals across our group here, but we never thought about a peacock being a part of a crime. But a beloved Las Vegas neighborhood peacock named Pete, Pete the mm-hmm. Cock, was senselessly murdered with a hunter's bow and arrow, and authorities are trying to find the culprit. Animal Protection Services officers are investigating the death of Pete. He belonged to a resident in a small gated neighborhood, but had come to be accepted as the neighborhood pet throughout the years. Felicity Carter, a neighbor, said she found the bird Monday against a fence with an arrow sticking out of him. She wrapped Pete up in a blanket and with the help of other neighbors, took him to a vet who specializes in exotics. Unfortunately, when they got to the vet, they discovered that Pete had actually been shot twice with the bow. I just don't understand why someone would do this. We all just want to find out who did this. We want justice for Pete, she said. Several neighbors say they are heartbroken. They loved to feed Pete berries and found comfort in knowing he was always just around the corner, lounging in someone's yard or chasing the garbage truck on Tuesday mornings. Pete could often be seen admiring his reflection in the chrome detailing of cars parked in the neighborhood. The mail courier and landscapers all knew Pete, too, and would drive carefully through the neighborhood in case he was out in the street. He literally would walk right down the middle of the street with his swagger on display like he owned the joint, Carter said, laughing. Carter described it as a happy accident how Pete came to be a resident in the neighborhood. Pete's owner, she said, 
claimed that years ago, the peacock randomly showed up at his doorstep, and so he decided to keep it. Soon everyone knew Pete, and other residents chipped in to take care of him. Now the neighborhood is too quiet and much less colorful without him. There is a $50,000 reward. They loved their peacock Pete. There is a $50,000 reward for anyone with information that leads to an arrest. I'll be back in a couple of days, boys. I'm going to solve this one. Yeah. <laughs> Connecting to Pete's murder. Yeah, I would think it would, a bunch of neighbors got to have video cameras. It yeah. doesn't sound like it's a big neighborhood. Yeah, it's not gonna be a Who's going to be good with cops. a bow and arrow? They call the possum cops out on them. But the deal being is, you know, that peacocks are, are like super, super uh, like guard dogs. They're very protective of, of the yeah. yards and the neighborhoods. Like they'll come after your ass. Yeah, yeah. Peacock can tear you up. Yep. Well, not Pete. Well, no, Pete say. was very nice. Pete, Pete would admire his, uh, reflection, would, would admire his reflection, and he would follow the uh, the landscapers and the, and the garden. I mean, he was beloved. But probably because they were feeding him. Yeah. Well, I think that neighborhood should put a monument up to Pete and they need to get right back on it and go out and get themselves a new peacock. Hey, how the, uh, you puppies working? <laughs> well, I don't know if you've followed any of my discussions with Jake that I've, I've posted a couple of discussions yeah, with Jake. I, Jake I Jake's one. having a, Jake's He's having taken over our face. Jake's having a difficult, dog. <laughs> Jake's having a difficult time with, all of this. Oh, oh, that's your other dog. The incumbent yeah. dog. Yeah. yeah. He's, uh, I'm sure he's wondering why best. this is happening at this stage of life. Mm. I'd just like to say sex is a hundred percent mental. So <laughs> <laughs> oh, boy. Oh, I'm just picking with you. Mike. Just picking with you. Hey, I'm, you know, three, <laughs> three dogs in the bed. Doesn't make it any more difficult than That's it's been. True. That's a know. good point. Yeah. And, and look, we, we hope that Pete's murderer is found soon, and, and uh, we love pets around here. So, right. Hey, uh, and, and to the one person, uh, I guess, ex-fan who left us a one-star review uh, um, did, saying I that I that. laughed about puppies being bold, I did not kiss my ass. I'm sorry. Go ahead. There you go. Straight from the wolf. He did not laugh. All right. Uh, look, high school football yep. hit last yeah. week, right? Yeah. Big deal, Friday night lights all over the country, and a sad situation developed in Oklahoma. One person is dead, and four people were shot during a football game on Friday night. Shots rang out around 10, 15 p.m. Friday during the third quarter of the Choctaw High School versus Dell City High School football game. Officials said shots were fired from the visitor side of the stadium. It is believed an argument started between at least two males, which led to the shooting. A 16-year-old boy was killed. Authorities said he was not a student at either school. Choctaw is located about 16 and a half miles from Oklahoma City. A 42-year-old man was shot in the chest and transported to the hospital. He spent most of the night in surgery and is in stable condition in the ICU. And a Dell City officer discharges firearm at the scene, and Oklahoma County Sheriff's Office is investigating that. A girl was also shot and has been treated and released. Two other girls believed to be students were injured trying to leave the scene. Live coverage of the game showed the moments when the shots were fired. The video showed players running from the field and others getting on the ground. Everyone on the field was okay. A reporter who covered the game said he heard shots ring out with less than five minutes left in the third quarter, which halted the game, obviously. He said the incident started in the northeast corner of the stadium where the players just started running. Choctaw High School players also ran off the field. There are no suspects, but investigators have given the description of a person of interest. Two guns and eight rounds were recovered from Ooh. the scene. Crazy. So, yeah, I mean, look, hi, Friday night's. Uh, is always, you know, that's supposed to be a fun time. The right. community gets together. Right. This is not a, a huge deal. community. It reminds me a lot of Denham Springs right. where we record out of. And something like that is just awful. Unreal. Are they putting uh, fans for high school games, most of them through metal detectors when they, when they come through? Or no, they, we don't go through metal detectors. You don't go through metal detectors? No. I mean, I, mean, see, I would imagine in some schools they probably I mean, for know. almost – Every basketball tournament I can think of that we played last year, 
we all had to go through metal detectors. Wow. Yeah, we we don't Not do a that. While as a coming team, I remember you could go in a courthouse or you know any of these places without metal detectors. But I guess now it's just well, it's sad it and scary, but you know it provides a, a level of safety. Yeah. Well, let me, let me take you to the next story. I'll, the, um, you know, well, we talk about fentanyl, but there's a new problem on the street. And I'm not going to read this word for word. I'm just going to touch on some points of it so you'll know about it. So the, the drug is uh, Zylazine, okay? And it's a powerful animal sedative, commonly known as Trank on the street, and it's totally effing up everything that, that you know, the fentanyl, now everybody has uh, all the first responders and everybody has these Narcan uh, uh, injectors where they can hit the people with it when they overdose. Well, it doesn't work on on these people that are using it. And the doctors don't understand it. Uh, um, they they haven't figured out a way how to ca- counteract it yet. And like they have with, you know, a speedball of cocaine and heroin or fentanyl and everything else. But the... So, I mean, they're freak, kind of freaking out about it. But, but Trank's presence uh, and sometimes forces doctors to use different drugs to shore up a patient's falling blood pressure or plummeting heart rate. And many users also don't know the drugs they're shooting, snorting, or smoking, or laced xylazine. Uh, and you know, it's very addictive, and it, it, it's hard for them to get clean. But, y'all, check this out. It, this drug is so far beyond anything else we've known. This is where you may have heard of it. It actually rots your flesh, right? Oh and and causes psychoses. And um and it's just only becoming more popular with the people in the street because it gives them a really f- freaking crazy high. I mean it extends crazy, it too, right? right? It makes right. it last a lot longer. And, yeah, a lot longer than, than um fentanyl or anything else. What it was intended use was for veterinary seizures, tranquilizer, meaning to knock out horses and cattle. So imagine that. So you're going to do Jeez. that. So so the strength of the sedative strikes the human users like a hammer to the head, often leaving those who ingest the trank laced heroin or fentanyl into a, a catonic state. This is along with tranks. Tendency to mutilate the skin and leave deep stomach churning lesions have led many to dub it the zombie drug. And in most states, the drug has not even been named a controlled substance because it was never intended for human use. This has happened throughout history of narcotics, y'all, and including ecstasy back in the 80s. It, it wasn't even labeled as a CDS back then. Um, but this has made it easier for drug dealers who realize the cheap cutting agent will extend the fentanyl's high to flood the market with it. Mm. So now fentanyl really is a cutting agent. We've talked about that before. It's extend the other products. And, and now, now these fuckers have found a way to find another drug that you can't trace and cut fentanyl with. Uh, all about the money, right? And it's impervious to Narcan. Right, right. Yeah, and or anything else that they're, they're trying so, and then that's, that's why it's become so popular. And now your high goes from one or two hours to more like uh, four or five hours. And you're going to be seeing a lot more of this drug, y'all. And, um, and last month, officials from the U.S. Drug Enforcement Administration said the agency is starting to see crooks ship kilograms, as kilos, as, uh, of trank powder into the country, something they've never seen before. They'll be outlawing it pretty quick. I had actually heard about this, but you know, if you're going to do something, I you know, get tweakers where the body processes out the poison. And that's why they get scabs. This shit is eating your flesh, dude. And people want to do it. Yeah. Well, they don't realize they're doing it most of them because that's they sick. think that, well, I mean, they're wanting to do something and get high, right? Yeah. They think they're doing something with fentanyl in it, and now it's trained. Yeah, that's no, just I've seen, absolutely. I've seen yeah, I'm looking at a I'm looking at a picture yeah. of I mean it's it's Bad hard shit. to look somebody's leg here with just lesions all up and down their mm, uh, their leg. They look like abscesses. Hey y'all, changing my wardrobe from summer to fall, it's never easy. Luckily, Quince offers timeless and high quality items I adore. Ensure my wardrobe stays fresh and I don't blow my budget. And there's nothing easier than going to Quince and choosing these high quality items like cashmere sweaters from $50, pants for every occasion, washable silk tops, and so much more. 
The best part, all Quince items are priced 50 to 80% less than similar brands. By partnering directly with top factories, Quince cuts out the cost of the middleman and passes the savings on to us. And Quince only works with factories that use safe, ethical, and responsible manufacturing practices and premium fabrics and finishes, and I love that. I got the stainless steel Link Apple Watch band for $59.90. It's heavy duty. It's awesome. And it's like $100 less than I could find anywhere else. And I also got a 100% organic Cotton Fisherman quarter zip up sweater. The color is alabaster. Man, I can't wait to wear that this fall. And Cindy got the Mongolian cashmere boat neck sweater in Heather Gray. And I'm telling you, these are classic pieces at a fraction of the price. Make switching seasons a breeze with Quince's high quality closet essentials. Go to quince.com slash RLRC for free shipping on your order and 365 day returns. That's Q U I N C E dot com slash RLRC to get free shipping and 365 day returns. Quince.com slash RLRC. You'll thank me later. Hey, y'all, let me tell you about Gobble. All Gobble meal kits are pre-prepped. That means less work for you and less waste in your kitchen. Their meal kits include everything you need so you can save time at the store or just skip that trip entirely. I got the box in and I had three different meals. I had a Kung Pao chicken, crispy fish tacos, and a beef boom jignon. However you say it, but let me tell you about the classic beef boom jignon. Look, it came with beef pot roast and a beef broth concentrate, red wine demi glaze, cremini mushrooms, ciapelloni onions, mashed potatoes, baby carrots, and rosemary thyme butter. It was so easy to make. Literally like 15 minutes it took Cindy. And let me tell you something, and all the dishes were fire, but this thing was like a taste explosion in my mouth. It's just un real we've got to spend more time together and more time doing the things we love because everything came in this one single box right to my door so see what a difference gobble will make for your household right now they're all for my listeners a fantastic limited time deal you get a hundred and twenty dollars off across four boxes plus free shipping and free cookies. And let me tell you, those cookies, I ate one that was sin-baked and it was delicious. Go to gobble.com slash real life. That's G-O-B-B-L-E dot com forward slash real life for $120 off your first four boxes. This offer is not available on the home site, so don't miss out. This is genius. It's taste explosions in your mouth like you never had. Well, let's move out to the West Coast, to Los Angeles, where I'm going to do a little bit of a shout out to our Real Life Real Crime Daily fans of the Real Housewives of Beverly Hills, because we have a major thing unfolding here with Tom Girardi, who is the ex-husband of Real Housewife of Beverly Hills mainstay Erica Jane. For years, fans of the show wondered what the voluptuous blonde was doing with a man more than twice her age. His appearances on the show were few and brief, but he always brought a sweet old man kind of vibe to the camera. And his wife's portrayal of him was always kind of in keeping with that sweet old man thing. He always had this very innocent uh, smile on his face. He just he looked like grandpa, this guy. We were told that Tom ran a highly successful law firm, Girardi Keese. Girardi was the first attorney in the state of California to win a million-dollar-plus award in a medical malpractice case. He's handled or his firm's handled major cases against companies like Lockheed Martin, PSG&E, uh, the Los Angeles MTA, and all seven of the major Hollywood studios. In the case against PSG&E, the utility company – agreed to pay $460 million in damages to residents of the desert community of Hinkley, California. The residents blamed incidents of cancer and other diseases on contaminated water leaked from a gas pumping station that PSG&E controlled. The Girardi persona was forever changed by a March of 2021 Los Angeles Times cover story that reported that Girardi had been sued 
more than 100 times by clients. Multiple complaints had been filed against him with the California State Bar. Nevertheless, his bar license had remained pristine. It was alleged that he had some kind of special relationship with the bar officials that kept him from getting in trouble. Many of the bar complaints involved alleged financial malfeasance, including allegations of theft by two dozen women who won a $17 million judgment in a lawsuit claiming that hormone replacement therapy caused them to get cancer. They alleged that the funds were misappropriated by Girardi's firm. So basically, Girardi was Alec Murdaugh before Alec Murdaugh was Alec Murdaugh. In June of 2022, a court ordered Girardi disbarred and to pay $2.3 million in restitution, this alleging from a case where uh, he is accused of stealing from uh, victims who won a settlement on a 2018 plane crash. He was charged with eight counts of wire fraud and four counts of criminal contempt of court by a federal grand jury. In that case, Erica Jane filed for divorce from her uh, estranged husband in November of 2020 after 21 years of marriage as racketeering and embezzlement allegations began to come up. The allegations included both a criminal and a civil suit, the latter of which named Erica Jane as well in it. Just as things were progressing toward a court date uh, in Chicago, which is where this uh, case involving the uh, the plane uh, crash was, uh, on his federal charges, Tom's health began to fade. He was diagnosed with dementia and late onset Alzheimer's in March of 2021. That July, he was moved to a facility with 24-hour care. He was placed under a conservatorship managed by his younger brother in February of 21. That became permanent in July of 21. His purposeful manipulation of the proceedings to avoid the consequences of a trial uh, matter directly demonstrate how cunning and capable he is. So prosecutors have accused him of faking his dementia. Both Tom and Erica attended a hearing this Wednesday to determine if he is competent to stand trial. The hearing was held to decide if Tom 84 should proceed to trial or be held at a government facility for additional evaluation. This, according to the L.A. Times, he was unable to recall his attorney's names or that they represented him or uh, uh, or anything about uh the present day circumstances, he appeared to struggle to retain factual information, including that his firm no longer existed and that he was no longer a practicing attorney. So he's either in the throes of this or has become very good at faking this thing. So multiple civil suits are still pending against this guy. And uh, we'll see where it goes from here. That was for you, lovely Real Housewives of Beverly Hills fans. The guys oh, are silent. I'm getting shit. the silent treatment. Holy shit. Hey. 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 Jim, how much of sex is mental? 100%. 100%. Sex okay. for Mike is mental. Hey. <laughs> wow. Any comments on that, Woody? I have no idea. I think Mike just about covered it. Yeah, I think you covered it. <laughs> We have no you questions. An, you answer all my questions, Mike. I know you guys secretly watch Bravo. Come on. Yes, come on. No, I, know. I know you do. Oh, I'm still trying to figure out what the crime you was. Can you can now take off that belt like and move yeah. freely around the cabin. <laughs> all right. We're, we're bringing you another mile high crime today. And uh, this one, y'all, is one where the airport is actually going to have to pay some money uh, for something horrible. When I tell you what happened with United Airlines, you're not going to believe it. They're set to pay a $30 million settlement to a family of a quadriplegic man who was injured while deplaning from a flight to Monroe, Louisiana. The incident involved a 26-year-old by the name of Nathaniel Foster, a man who was using a wheelchair, ventilator, and tracheal tube in February of 2019. The family accused a supervisor of assisting Foster in an aggressive nature, pushing him while getting off the plane. It resulted in his body jerking forward, then backward, and eventually him whispering, I can't breathe. His mother went to get help, but she said an airline gate agent giggled and said, we got this. When a health professional started offering a helping hand, 
Uh, the family says that Foster had cardiac arrest, leading him to suffer major brain damage. The situation caused Foster to not be able to eat solid foods or speak and cut years from his life expectancy from 39 to 31.5 years. When traveling, four to six staff members usually assist Foster in getting off the plane, but that day only one person was there. And uh, when booking the trip, Foster's mother said she disclosed his condition to the airline. Based on the repeated assurances provided by United Airlines of its ability to provide safe transportation, uh, they bought a ticket. And they were un- it was obvious when he was deplaning, they were unprepared to handle the situation. Uh, this from the family's attorney. Uh, Foster remains in a persistent vegetative state today. The settlement was reached Tuesday after one day of trial. In a statement, the airline said, we are pleased to share this, uh, that this matter has settled. The settlement will see $12 million get illegal fees, $3 million to cover other expenses, and the rest, of course, go to the family, so about half. Yeah, about uh, $15 million. And he's, he's basically yeah, dead. and that's a drop in the bucket, let's face it, for United Airlines. But I'm, I'm glad to see this family getting something uh, just horrible, awful situation yeah, um, there. And most times we do those stories and where you do them and they're funny, but that one's Yeah, stupid. yeah. And, um, Lawyers, $12 million? Yeah, that's about right. Yeah. You can now take off that belt and move freely around the cabin. Let's uh, lighten it up a little bit. Yeah, we're about to really After a story like that, I think I'm ready to get kinky. So kinky crimes for Wednesday. And y'all, we've done some great ones, but this one, if there was all... Kinky crime team, these people would have to be on it. So listen to this show. All right. So I'm not going to tell you the headline, but um, uh, let's see how I, I want to wear this without giving it away right away. So there's this couple, and the guy's name's Eric, and they have a very active sex life. He had a very active sex life with his girlfriend of two years, Katie. You know, it's 100% mental, though. Yeah, this one is not. not with them, so, it ain't. No, it's not. <laughs> so uh, the couple admit to having an active sex life, and this pack, past weekend was no different. After engaging in sex, Katie decided to bribe her boyfriend into getting some chores done with the promise of a round two. Hey, I love round right? twos. However, Eric admitted he needed a break. He said, <laughs> it's really hard to keep up with Katie's amazing sex drive. And unbeknownst to her, I had been taking some Viagra. Hey. Right? He said, I had to make sure I was ready for the surprise later, so I had to take a little bit extra. That's right. At, Be proactive, as, not reactive. As he awaited his reward, Eric went about fitting Katie's bedroom door. He said, I had to cut a really small hole because, of course, Katie has to have a vintage doorknob. As I was looking at the new doorknob hole, I had an amazing idea. Oh, I can see it coming. Eric proceeded to poke his now erect penis through the <laughs> hole in the door, much to Katie's delight. Now, listen, if I was Eric, I wouldn't have said I cut a small hole. <laughs> yeah, I'd have right? been like, <laughs> I, mean, I had to cut I had it. to waller she, that sucker out six it. feet. She turns with a gas can lid. But anyway, so um, <laughs> Eric. Stuck his penis through the erect penis through the hole, much to Katie's delight. And she says, I was surprised by how turned on I was. Oh, okay. I was playing with him through the door hole, and I got ex- so excited that I just said, We should have sex right now through the door. <laughs> However, the couple had to cut their rump short when. Eric's penis became jammed in the hole. Oh, the Viagra my. causes penis sweat to swell, making it too big for the space. Mm. My penis is stuck in this door hole, and I've never been in more excruciation and pain in my entire life. I took more than the recommended dose, and well, it created a lot of blood flow. Katie had, <laughs> Katie had it. When I saw my boyfriend's penis turning purple, I was just thinking. He might lose his penis. <laughs> After trying to free his member with the help of butter, olive oil, shampoo, and lotion, Katie was forced to call 911. <laughs> I was so unbelievably embarrassed, Eric admitted, as he explained to the police and paramedics how he had become, <laughs> how he'd come to be in that position. 
They explained that erectile dysfunction pill could last for hours and he would continue to swell, which could lead him to lose circulation and eventually lose his penis. The paramedics didn't want to risk cutting him out completely and potentially cutting off his penis. Oh, so, shit. Right? so instead, they cut away a section of the door so Eric could make it to the ER where they could safely remove Oh, him. I and love that. Has to be the that has to be the best. Wait, 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 wait so he left the residence with like a, yes. a, a yes. piece yes. of the door, yes. a foot by foot yes. section of the door. Yes. With oh, my God. Greatest show on earth. Yes. You better believe they had every supervisor, every paramedic, every cop on duty come see that shit. <laughs> Back in the day, we had a code word. Those pictures are out there. We Those had a code word that was, you know, well, we didn't have cameras back then, but we had a code word. If I rolled up on something and I called it whatever it was, uh, uh, code blue or something like that, everybody knew this was some greatest shit. Come see it. You let let me see, see the it. picture. Yeah. So, Okay. And we'll post the picture of yeah, this yeah. couple, not not in the door, but just who, them. Who is it worse for, her or him? Like uh, facing yeah, people gotta after be, this, gotta be him. him. Gotta, gotta be, be him. him. I mean, you. But hey, even when all these people, strangers, arrive and your dick's still so hard, it's it's black hang, point <laughs> stuck through a door. You can't get it out. Dude, that, I would go to freaking out, man. Ever, right? I can't get it out. Olive oil. What else did she try? Olive oil, oh, shampoo, shampoo, whatever else. The, yeah, uh, lotion. The, yeah. But the deal being is, now she knows he takes Viagra. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God. Well, that was a good that one. That was a good one. Very yeah. good. Mm. So that was your kinky crime. crimes. I guess that would be the way to overcome the 100% mental yes. <clears throat> well. sex part. Yeah. Banjo <clears throat> time. Banjo, banjo. Banjos. Banjos and fiddles. Jim was. We always let that one go a little longer. Jim was basically like, yeah. dancing. No, for, he, was, uh, he was orchestrating. Oh, he was. Uh, yeah. He was. Uh, leading, he was, he was leading the band. That, That's right. What's Patel from Austin is going to get him to come out there and orchestrate the. Opera and is <laughs> yeah. okay. Well, this is a crime commentary show, hmm. and we except for the one you did about well, no, that, no, no, no. That this is twenty five a- minute segment you did. <laughs> of, uh, Bravo. It was the same crime that Murdaugh uh, com- uh, is, is uh, committed. Uh, so killing kids. And it was, well, I, embezzle, embezzling from clients, yeah, which were the so main. Yeah, it's not the same kids. Cause well, no, that, he, he, didn't, he, didn't, he didn't kill his right. wife and son. Last Thursday was perhaps the most significant arrest in American history. Uh-oh. And so I thought there's only one way to cover that, and that would be with a poem. And so we have Un- an episode. Unapproved. Of, no, 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 no. Can't be called unsanctioned. This is an absolute crime, and it is a segment, Poetic Justice. <clears throat> Let me begin. In 2016, they called his win illegit, then came up with BS to declare him unfit. They cried about Russia, 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 and a bribe for Trump <laughs> Tower— even told tales about hookers and a golden shower. (laughs) A call to Ukraine became reason to impeach. An objective observer might call that a reach. Three years as commander-in-chief to lose in 2020 would take a thief. Was the election stolen, as some have said, or was this pure fantasy inside Trump's head? There's a difference between stolen and conspiratorially taken, but either way the results— left Republicans shaken. The protest on Jan 6 was to be peaceful, but tempers would flare on grounds that were policeful. Insurrection (laughs) is claimed by the Dems right away with plans of future elections to sway. Orange man's down, but he's not quite dead, so a plan emerges to sever his head. Charge him with all kinds of crimes, oh Lord. Get the DOJ, FBI, and Soros DAs on board. Weaponize them all, spend all you can afford, and strike him down with a mighty sword. The first charge from New York is almost too funny. Bregg's claiming crime over stripper hush money. Trump said some dumb things that were caught on tape. This one's a crime, but it's not really rape. Trump popping off in front of a crowd, holding classified docs he was not allowed. 
But this case is in Florida where Trump is a hero, so this one could end up 12 to 0. The other two cases pose real trouble, either could end up in a pile of rubble. Obstruction is the charge in the DOJ's case, but D.C. juries always make it about race. (laughs) It would take a miracle for Trump to win here, but if reps win the presidency, a pardon is clear. The case in Georgia is a problem for certain. A Fulton County jury could deliver a hurting. If he loses in GA, jail time is a must, no matter how many may call it unjust. RICO, hush money, obstruction, and more. Likely Trump ends up behind a prison door. Trump's lived life always pushing the rules. This time they have him by the family jewels. Biden has destroyed so much of our brand. Look at what's happened under his unsteady hand. Afghanistan, COVID, the border, the economy. It all scares the living shit out of me. There's crime running rampant in our major cities, but he's busy chopping off 12-year-olds' titties. When he speaks in public, we're all embarrassed. But if he goes down, we get Kamala Harris. (laughs) A win at the polls in 24 is a must. We need leadership we can all trust. In it for Donald, he has always been, but selfishness now is a mortal sin. Pledge to support the winner of the race and shock the world with a display of grace. If this would happen, I'd bet a lot some of the charges might magically be dropped. At 77, let go of the rage. Don't spend the rest of your life in a cage. Go down in history for this brave call and watch us complete your border wall. (laughs) Poetic justice. Oops, wrong button. <laughs> oh, boys. There you go. You don't get the full BNJ now. Dang, unsanctioned. <laughs> I'm not touching any of that. Poetic that, justice I'm not on touching any of that. that a that mugshot that has been you, seen by five and a half just, billion people. I, 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 get, That's true. I get there was an arrest, and that part was valid, but you're about to feel the wrath of... All, all, all the different conflicting reasons why we don't do politics on this show. Not from me, from the fans. I'm going to leave it alone. I, I covered an arrest story. I presented both sides. They stole what? What they is steal, Jim Chapman? How about a porch, Woody Everton? Mm. A, a whole freaking porch. porch. A porch? Porch. A, With a C. German H. sports car? A porch pirate took on a new meaning when a man was arrested for pilfering an entire expensive porch from a neighbor's home. The porch in question, an eight foot by 10 foot porch, uh, and it would be what was used as an entry and an exit to a home. Police described the porch as very well destructed and that the builder used top of the line lumber to construct the $3,000 attachment. The house had a no trespassing sign and all of the things you would uh, you would think a house would be abandoned uh, up in the yard. And officials identified Robin Swearinger as a suspect and were looking for him for days for stealing this wooden porch. They eventually located him when they received a call about a domestic disturbance with his wife. He was arrested and charged with felony theft and battery. And you never think about that, but yeah, they'll they'll disassemble porches. Oh, porch! I mean, Look, that's, wood that's ain't cheap. Like, yeah, well, that's not cheap, and it's not like that's a two second crime. Like you're running to Walgreens and stealing some shit. You got to tear off a whole porch. Yeah, you got to have and like a, haul it out a drill and everything and to get all that. But they will go after it. So there you go mind your porches, people. They stole what? They stole what? And we have come. To the end of our episode. What yes, we have. Yes, Final thoughts. Oh, look, real quick. Uh, I'd like to mention just a couple of quick things. Uh, Bloody Angola. We uh, we are now an Apple podcast. We have Apple podcast uh, subscriber uh, service available. So uh, for those of you that aren't patron people's go to apple podcast and you can subscribe there. Yeah, yeah We've man. been working on that one for a while. And then anybody has an approval who, process. Who, who, goes to a bloody angle for the first time through that podcast, that option will automatically pop up for them. Yes. 
Correct. And uh, we want to shout out our rescue. Yes. Uh, do what you can. Uh, See something, say something. That's right. Ourrescue.org. You can go there and uh, and get in the fight to help end human trafficking worldwide. Yep. And until next time, I'm Jim Chapman. And I'm Woody Everton. And I'm Mike Agavino. Don't forget, September 1, the premiere of God Family Football. Check it out on Amazon Freebie. That's right. For real life, real crime daily. Peace. Peace. Ellen Manning. How to have fun anytime, anywhere. Step one, go to ChumbaCasino.com. ChumbaCasino.com. Got it. Step two, collect your welcome bonus. Come to Papa Welcome Bonus. Step three, play hundreds of casino style games for free. That's a lot of games. All for free? Step four, unleash your excitement. Woohoo! Chumba Casino has been delivering thrills for over a decade. So claim your free welcome bonus now and live the Chumba life. Visit ChumbaCasino.com. BGW Group, no purchase necessary. Void were prohibited by law. See terms and conditions 18 plus.